Hey everyone, it's Rebecca from DevourDinner.com and welcome to my kitchen. I am excited to have you here today. Welcome. It's good to have you. Happy Sunday. As we get started, I am going to go and put the links in the comments for you guys so that you have them as we're welcoming people in. And as you join us, don't hesitate to say hello and let me know where you're from and all of that good stuff. Just get these dropped in. There are, let's see here. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. I see comments. Tim, you made it. You're like the first one again. Tracy, welcome. It is so good to have you guys. Happy Sunday. How are you guys doing? Is it good where you're at? Are we like, what's it like? What's the weather like? What, what's, your le what's the level in your state on opening back up? Um, I know we have a lot of variables going on across the country. Um, here in Idaho, we're, we just hit our phase two is what they're calling it, which essentially means that we can start opening the dining rooms for restaurants um, with limitations. Um, hair salons, nail salons, those stores can open. Um, in phase one, we were able to open a lot of our smaller businesses um, as long as they were doing a lot of curbside pickup and the social distancing and, you know, all that extra cleanliness and stuff that goes on. Um, so we're just started phase two and that goes through the end of the month. Um, I think we can have groups of 10 together, no more than 10. So we're still really small. Um, but we're able to get out and move around a little bit. Oh my gosh. So many happy faces. You guys, I talk for a minute and I miss you. Um, hello, Eileen. Hello, Ginger, Dorothy, Liz, Sherry, Sandy, Marilyn, Georgia, Pam, Roberta, Linda, um, Sherry, Juanita, Catherine, Sandra, Jolene, Suzanne, Amy. Welcome, Gail. Carol Ann, welcome. Dee, welcome. Diane, Amy, welcome. Linda, Tim, welcome. Susan, Sandra, Kay, Linda, and Peggy. Woohoo! You guys, hello. Welcome, welcome to everyone. Um, thank you, Gail. Thank you, Amy from the Instapot 101 for Beginners Family. Thank you for inviting the group on over. If you're from Instapot 101 for Beginners, welcome. I love having you here. I'm Rebecca from DevourDinner.com, where I focus on easy to make recipes for busy families using common ingredients. I like to be creative. I like lots of flavor in my food. And I like to cook fresh a lot of times too. Um, but I'm known for pantry meals and easy recipes, 30 minute meals, and a lot of pressure cooker Instapot recipes. So if you're new here, please say hello in the comments. This is a safe community. Your questions are, everyone's asked these questions before and we're happy to answer them again. So feel free to ask them. And no question is silly. We all have to learn. It's a safe place. A lot of my top fans come week after week and help and answer questions. They give great advice and they help me along the way. And I'm so grateful for them. I love seeing their faces every Sunday as we get together and we hang out for about an hour. So kind of fun, huh? All right, a little bit of housekeeping as we get started here. Um, I'm gonna do my star shout outs. If you guys are familiar, down in your comment section, there's a star. And those stars are things that you can send to me. They're worth money, you have to buy them, um, no pressure. But I like to shout out and give an extra thank you to those people who have sent me those stars. The money that you're sending goes to ingredients. It allows me to do what I do, it helps me um, with not only the ingredients that you see today, um, but recipe testing um, and getting regular recipes out on my website for each one of you. And that's just a simple way to support me if you want to. Um, and I'm just super grateful. So let me give some shout outs. To Jamie Law, Peggy Diaz, Sherry Napier, Napier, um, Gail Bell, Lynn Deming, Sherry Wellman, and Jean LaPlante. LaPlant? Okay, I'm killing. Sorry, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of you guys sent me stars last week. It makes me giddy. It's exciting. Um, and I'm so grateful for it. 
and it's kind of fun. So that's what stars are. Feel free to send stars if you'd like. And if you don't like, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart, share the content. As you guys know, for whether you do it for myself or any blogger out there, when you like, comment, and share our content, it helps tell that platform that it's good content and it needs to get out to more people and we appreciate it. So when you do that, it helps drive traffic, which in turn generates revenue for our small businesses. Believe it or not, my blog, Devour Dinner, is a small business. I have taken a huge hit um, during the stay in place orders, believe it or not. And we're doing our best to keep it open and up and running and all of that kind of good stuff. So with all that business out of the way, let's get down to cooking, all right? Oh yeah, one more thing. If you're watching this on YouTube, I do upload these videos to YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button, follow along. These videos will go live every Sunday night um, after I'm live here on Facebook. So welcome to my YouTube group as well. <sighs> Amy, it says you sent stars last week. Did I miss it? Oh my gosh. Okay. Big shout out to Amy too. I know I caught you the week before, Amy. You're awesome. Everyone who's done that is like fabulous. I'm seeing a bunch of you say welcome. I am guessing there's somebody here who's brand new, and I love all these welcomes, so that's awesome. Carol Ann made the comment, I made your teriyaki sauce last night. It was delicious with a big heart. I know, isn't it great? Like, I won't make teriyaki sauce any other way. If you missed that episode or that live, that was, was that last week or the week before? I don't remember. The week before, my husband is telling me. So kind of fun. <laughs> Susan says happy hour here. Susan, we do have a lot of fun here. Mary, hello from Wisconsin. Dave, hi, I love it when we have some men on here. All right, we're gonna get down to business. Let's get started. So for the first thing that we're gonna do, this recipe that I put in the comments and I'm gonna drop it again, we are gonna make a recipe. This recipe is super, super popular. It's called cream cheese chicken stuffed croissants. And it's one of my most popular recipes on my website. I've been making it for about 30 years. And it's so simple and it's so easy. So we're gonna do it kind of in two steps. The recipe calls for shredded chicken. And I like to meal prep, you guys know that. Um, so we're, I'm gonna teach you how to make shredded chicken using your pressure cooker. Today I'm using my Milthy Multipot. You guys know I love Milthy. It doesn't matter if you're using Instapot or a Multipot or any other brand of electric pressure cooker, it all works. And we're just gonna show you how to do it. So we're gonna pull this in. Oh, and by the way, I moved my picture in picture to the top corner. Apparently when it was down on the bottom corner over here, it was getting in the way of comments and you guys couldn't see and it was causing problems. So I appreciate the feedback. I don't know that that's happening. So sometimes that feedback, I call it constructive criticism and it helps me to give you guys a better experience. So I've moved it up here and I'm hoping that's a better experience for you guys. Now, for this, you guys can see the pot. I'm gonna take three chicken breasts and I'm just gonna place them in. I don't wanna touch them because there's no need to. Now you could load this up. I'm only putting in three chicken breasts today and I'm gonna add some salt on top and I'm gonna add some pepper. So your salt and pepper might vary depending upon um, how many chicken breasts you put in. I typically on a Sunday evening will meal prep and will cook up some chicken breasts so that I have it for the week, so I can use it in a variety of recipes, including this one, the cream cheese chicken. Then we're gonna put some garlic on top. Now, let me just teach you something. If I was gonna use this for enchiladas, let's say, I might want to season this a little bit differently. I might want to put some cilantro, some cumin, some chili powder in with my chicken breasts so that I get some of those Mexican flavors that I'm looking for when, um, when it's all said and done. So you can season your chicken however you want. I put it right in the bottom, no trivet, as you guys can see. 
And I'm going to add, I'm getting looks off camera, you guys. <laughs> All right, just a minute. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'll move it. We're going to add chicken broth. I like to cook with chicken broth because it gives flavors, okay? We're going to add a cup of chicken broth in, and then we're going to start this. I want to get this going, and we're going to push our ceiling to the back. We're going to set this for pressure cook, and then I'm going to use the plus and the minus keys, and I'm going to set this for like 16 minutes today. Now, I know a lot of you might chime in and say, you only need to cook chicken breast 12 minutes, and that's true. That's correct. You can get away with cooking chicken breasts for 12 minutes. I like to cook them a few more minutes because I'm going to shred them, and I just want them to fall apart. And because they're sitting in all of the liquid, they stay moist and tender and juicy, and they're fabulous. So you guys just heard the beep. The beep tells us that the pressure cooker has taken our readings and has gone ahead and set those up. And then we're going to push this off to the side. And then I'm going to move my picture in picture for you guys. Hold on. All right. It's going down. That's where we're putting it. Is that good, guys? I want to see uh, comments. Somebody give me a comment so I know if that picture in picture is better. And we're going to move on. Huh. Okay. My husband says we're freezing. Up for some of you. Tim says it's freezing a lot today. So... Let me tell you what happens when it freezes. Did you go and kick everyone else off the internet here? Okay. Um, Facebook will only allow people so much bandwidth, essentially. Um, and it could just mean that there's a lot of people on Facebook today. There's a lot of people streaming today. There's a lot of things. So if it freezes, I apologize. Um, there's nothing I can do for that, unfortunately. So we're just going to keep going. Okay, if you, if you get kicked out, please come back in. Give me some thumbs up. We're working through this. It's hard times. All right. Our chicken is cooking. It's going to take the 16 minutes. It's going to cook, and then we're going to let it have about a 20-minute natural pressure release and let the pressure out before we pull it out and we shred it. But you guys know I'm not going to make you wait that long. So guess what? I got chicken right here. You guys know I would have it all ready for you, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do, I cooked this earlier and we're just gonna pull it out. I wanna make sure you can still see what I got going on here. Um, and I like to just take forks to it and literally it just kind of shreds apart, okay? I like to break that up. So this chicken I seasoned the same way. With some salt, some pepper, some garlic. And for this recipe, we're going to use about two cups of shredded chicken. But you can see how easy that just pulls apart. It's just super nice. I'm gonna pull one more of those out and do the same thing. And this is what we're going to use in making these cream cheese croissants. All right. For this recipe, we will need, like I said, about two cups of shredded chicken, which two chicken breasts will give you lots more than two cups. You can also, quick tip, use rotisserie chicken cut up. You could use canned chicken as well. It's all wonderful. It all works just perfectly. All right, how are we doing over here? 
All right, I'm not seeing, let me scroll, there we go. Hey, Sandy's on. All right, I haven't seen her on here, but I see Gail's comment. Hello, Sandy. Sandy is from Simply Happy Foodie. She does lives on Saturday, although yesterday she was not feeling well. Um, so I hope she is feeling better. Um, make sure you follow her. She's a lot of fun, has a lot of great Instant Pot recipes. She is just great. Like her recipes are great. Her quality, they're thought out, they're good. You can refer people there and feel good about it. So um, that's Sandy at Simply Happy Foodie here on Facebook as well as .com. So, and there's Gail dropping my link. Gail, huge big shout out to Gail. Please like those comments that she does. It's so nice to have them. All right. To make cream cheese chicken, what we do is we take a bowl with eight ounces of cream cheese. Now, this is going to make eight pockets stuffed croissants. You can cut this recipe in half. So feel free to do half the recipe and just do four. With my family of boys, we need eight. So I use eight ounces of cream cheese, and I'm going to use two ounces, two tablespoons of butter. And I'm just going to take a fork and just kind of mix it up. Now, it does help if your cream cheese is softened a little bit. I'm also going to add just a little bit of milk as well. The recipe calls for about two tablespoons. I'm just going to put in about a tablespoon right now. This is one of those recipes that I eyeball and taste a lot. So we're going to mix that up. I'm also going to add a little bit of garlic powder to the mix. We can add a little bit more pepper as well because it's good. And then I'm going to throw in my chicken. Now, who here has picky eaters at home? I hope the majority have just raised your hands and said, oh my gosh, I do. You guys know I have a picky eater. So let me show you what I like to do for my picky eater. My picky eater for this recipe also calls for bell pepper and green onions, and he doesn't care for them all the time. So what I like to do is mix up all of this and pull some out for him. We're actually going to add more. That way, his is how he likes it, and I don't need to fight him, and I don't have to spend time making a whole other recipe either. So I'm just going to pull out a little bit for him. I'm just going to set it in my butter container. Right off to the side for him. All right. Now, I'm going to add one bunch of diced green onions and about a quarter of a cup of green bell pepper. And I just giggled over this, you guys. Look, these are the size bell peppers that they are selling right now. Do you see this? I'll put this on my hand. Look, do you see how tiny this is? Like, this is like a small apple. It is the craziest thing. Um, they're just tiny right now. All right, we're going to mix that in. And I might add just a little bit more milk to this. Now, if you want, you can also add a little bit of the tops of the green onions. Um, I like to do the bottoms. I like to keep the tops for garnish. But you could do whatever you wanted. All right. Let's get rid of this.
And let's get this out of the way. And we're back. All right. This is the part that the people ask me about the most. You guys always call in or write in or message in and say, I can never get my croissants to look like yours. What is the trick? So I want to show you. I really want to go slow and show you so that you guys can really see how I do this and how they turn out so picture perfect every time. I take a cutting board and we're going to use two cans. Two cans will make eight stuffed croissants. Again, you can very definitely cut this recipe in half and only make four. Who's afraid of popping those? You always afraid that they'll like explode on you? Me too. All right. Take a cutting board and unroll. This is a clean cutting board. And unroll them. And they naturally, let's go big here. They naturally have sections and that's all perforated. We're gonna make rectangles, all right? So we're gonna pull this. Set that aside. And just like that, okay? We wanna see big, nice rectangles. Now, I'm just gonna take my fingers, my little fingers here, okay? And I'm just pinching them to kind of seal that shut. All right? And that's it. It's that simple, okay? Then I'm gonna take my bowl, which I've kind of made flat, and I'm gonna portion it out. I'm gonna divide it in half, and divide it in half, and then divide the little pieces. That way I kind of know how much filling is gonna go in each one of these. <coughs> Bill, can you get me something to drink? All right, now I'm gonna take opposite corners and I'm pulling to the middle and pinching. Then I'm taking the outside corner and pulling it to the back. The outside corner, pulling it to the back. And there's my little pillow. So once again, I'm gonna take opposite corners, I'm gonna pull them together and pinch. Then I'm gonna take the side corner and pull it around. Take this corner and pull it back to the front to make that little pillow. Did that make sense? That's what I want to know. Now, your cookie sheet, you do want to spray with a little bit of cooking spray. And then we're going to gently lift these on to our pan. And we're going to duplicate the process all over again. So we're gonna unroll these. Now I find that these croissants work best if they don't sit out of the fridge very long. If they stay really cold, they're a lot easier to work with and a lot easier to handle. And here we go again. You're gonna see that this way. So remember, I'm gonna take the two, uh-oh. Did you guys catch me? I didn't pinch them. We might have a breakout on the bottom, but it's okay. It's gonna be all right. Because I'm gonna pick them up and pinch them on the bottom. There we go. So that's four done.
Okay, use your two fingers. Pinch them up. Now in the meantime, get your oven preheating to 350 degrees. We want that oven good and hot when you're ready to bake. Okay, and for my last two, I'm gonna go up close again. So you guys can see that one more time. Need to move these closer. All right, here's our last two. Thank goodness for the back of my thumb, right? Since I can click it. All right, we're gonna take the one for my son, which just has chicken and the cream cheese mixture. Ah, oh, my husband's over here saying, don't forget to pinch. You guys, it's such a routine. Let's lift that up. There we go. I'm gonna get this last one. Ooh, that's a big one. And then we're bringing them up, we're pinching it, wrap it around, wrap it around. That off to the side, move that off to the side. And I'm gonna take a couple of green onion toppers and put in the corner where my son's is. That way I will know exactly which one to serve him. Okay, we're almost ready. We gotta get this in the oven so it can start baking, you guys. Now, I like to do an egg wash. An egg wash makes that nice top just fabulous. So take an egg and just whisk it with a fork. And then we're just going to take a brush and we're gonna brush it on. And this is what gives that nice crispy coating outside to what we've got. Okay, the egg wash is optional. You do not need to do it. I just find that it just makes it look nice. So I just try to coat it everywhere. We're gonna pass these off and they're gonna bake for 12 or 13 to 15 minutes in a 350 degree oven or until they're toasty brown, okay? Because everything inside is cooked, we want it to get hot and we want this croissant to bake. That's what we're going for. So I'm gonna pass this off to my husband who's gonna put it in the oven and we're gonna answer questions. All right, here we go. Do they look good? I think they look great. Let's go put these in the oven. Here go. Now let's clean up my egg mess.
clean my hands off, and I'm ready to ask, answer questions for you guys. Oh, oh my heavens. I hope you guys could see. I was stuck on top down. I'm going to scroll back up a ways, see what questions I can find today. We've got so many new faces here. Hello, Jeanette from Tennessee. I have friends who moved out to Tennessee, but off the top of my head, I can't remember where. I've been to Tennessee in the Smoky Mountains, though. They're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I can see in here, Gail has commented a couple of times, what recipe am I doing? What was going on? The first thing that I did in this pressure cooker is I showed you how I make shredded chicken. So I use shredded chicken for lots and lots of recipes. I use it for shredded tacos. I use it in enchiladas. I use it in this recipe of cream cheese, chicken stuffed croissants. I put it on salads. I make burritos with it or taquitos with it. Um, like I put it into soups. The possibilities are just endless, okay? And so because of that, I meal prep with this recipe all the time, my shredded chicken recipe. Um, we'll go ahead and drop that really fast. So I typically, on a weekend, Sunday evening, will cook up a bunch of chicken and then shred it up and pre-portion it, and I'll throw it in the freezer so that I have it and I can pull it out and I can use it on those busy nights when I'm exhausted and I don't know what to make. But pulling out some chicken is super, super helpful. Um, one thing we love to do is make tostadas. Have you guys seen the big chips, the tostadas that you can buy? Well, if you take shredded chicken and you put down some mozzarella cheese and some barbecue sauce and pineapple and green onions and, and shredded chicken and more mozzarella, and you throw them under your broiler, it makes a barbecue chicken tostada. It's so good, it's so good. Um, so there's so many different things that you can do. And I do have that barbecue chicken tostada recipe on my website. I should have thought about it. Um, my husband might try to find it and put it up in the comments. Um, so shredded chicken can just be used for endless possibilities, which is why I love it. That's what we have going over here. It cooks for about 16, 18 minutes. Um, today I've got just three chicken breasts in there just to show you. I've seasoned my chicken breasts with salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic. You can also season, if you know you're gonna use the chicken for things like enchiladas or taquitos, you might wanna use some chili powder, some cumin, some cilantro, some lime in when you're cooking it. So think about how you could change that up based upon how you're gonna use that chicken. Nine times out of 10, I just season salt, pepper, and garlic so that it's cooked, it's ready, and I can add those other seasonings later if I need to. So we're just cooking away, and it'll cook, and then we'll do about a 20-minute natural pressure release. Based upon time, it may or may not be done by the time we're done, which is why I pulled out shredded chicken to show you what it looked like, which was earlier. And I showed you how easily I can shred that with a fork. I'm sure it was in the comments because it always pops up. You could put it in a bowl and use a hand mixer, and it shreds it and tears it apart, and it's so fast. It's a fun little tip that you can use to shred your chicken as well. Um, so that's what's going on here. And then we made up um, the chicken stuffed croissants that we have in the oven now. It made eight. Um, in that recipe called for cream cheese, a little bit of butter, salt, pepper, milk, diced green onions, and a little bit of diced green bell pepper. Now, what if you don't like green bell pepper? Lots of people don't. That's okay, leave it out. It's fine. You can put a red bell pepper, a yellow bell pepper, an orange bell pepper, or just leave it out entirely. Now, what if you added like a quarter of a cup of bacon crumbles? Yum, it's fantastic. Um, adding bacon is wonderful. Adding some ranch um, salad dressing, the powder mix into it, Phenomenal. Okay, it gives a little bit of that cracked chicken that we all love. You guys are familiar with cracked chicken. So this recipe is super versatile. There's so many ways that you could make it up um, and do things with it. And that's what I love. That's why this recipe has literally been made in our home for 30 years. My oldest son 
who's 24. It's his favorite. He does not know I'm making these today. If he happens to be watching, I do expect him to show up here towards the end because I did make you some, bud. Love ya. Um, oh, <laughs> I just got told from my husband he is watching. Uh, so I hope he heard that. I did make you one. Come and get it. Um, so we're just waiting for those to cook. They cook in a 350 degree oven for 13 to 15 minutes and or until golden brown. Um, and then we'll pull them out and they are then ready to eat quick and easy to go. So that's what we've done in a short recap um, over there. Gail says, I did strawberry jam and biscuits from last week, and it was amazingly simple. Okay, I have to tell you, you guys have been so awesome this week. So many of you have made my cinnamon roll recipe, which has been seen well over a million times. Um, that is my number one recipe on my website. You guys know that. In fact, somebody dropped it into some community on Facebook last night, and I searched for 45 minutes trying to find it and couldn't um, because there was a surge of traffic coming from Facebook to that recipe. And I couldn't find it. So if you're live and you're watching, bless you. Thank you. I love when you take your own pictures of recipes that I do and post them with a comment with a link back to my recipe. It does wonders. It drives traffic so well. And it just makes me grin and giggle. And it is just so heartwarming. And I'm humbled that you guys like my recipes enough that you make them and that you share them and that you tell your friends too. So thank you. Gail's been doing a lot of awesome recipes. She's been trying new things, which is out of her comfort zone, and I'm loving it. I can't even tell you. Um, it's fun when you get to know so many of you because you'll message me little pictures of, look what I made today, because you're so excited that you tried a recipe that maybe scared you or maybe was too hard, you thought. Um, and I love that I can break down recipes for you so that you can feel like you can try them. And that's the whole point of these lives. So I love it. Keep them coming. Keep sending me direct messages with them. Keep posting them into communities. All that good stuff. Um, so Sandra says, this is such a great idea for leftover chicken. Got to try this. Yes. We love leftover chicken, right? Don't let it go to waste. Um, my family doesn't like to eat the same thing twice. They don't love leftovers, you know, not many of us do. And so by making the shredded chicken, I can make it into something totally different the next day and it doesn't feel like leftovers because I don't call it that. Just a little tip. Um, Carol Ann says, great idea with leftover rotisserie chicken from Costco. Yes, Costco in fact is the best place. I think it's the best deal. It's their lost lead item um, if you have a Costco near you. But anywhere you get rotisserie chicken is great. Um, cut it up, add it to it. It works wonders as well. Always tips to save us time. Lisa says they look so good. Brenda says hi from Kentucky. I love it. You guys are so helpful. I love when I see comments. Marilyn, you just put in there chicken, cream cheese, green pepper, green onion, seasoning. You're just helping out others, and I love it. So thank you to all of you guys who do that. It's so helpful. Um, okay, Sandra's asking a question. Her question is, so how much shredded chicken would you say if I had leftover rotisserie chicken? Well, I would use really about the same. So I would use a good two cups. Um, you can add in a little more if you'd like. I look at the consistency of the cream cheese with a little bit of butter combination. Taste it, right? Taste it before. Um, and you may go, mmm, that's too heavy on the cream cheese. I want more chicken to balance it out. Or maybe you want more bacon if you're going to throw bacon into it. Or maybe you added celery. Celery is really good too for the crunch, for the texture. Keep in mind, if we don't add things like the green bell pepper or the green onions, we don't have any, a lot of texture in it because everything's super soft. So it depends on how much you're gonna add into it. If you're making it for all picky eaters, so no green onions, no bell peppers, no extras, you might wanna add some extra chicken so that you can plump those up, right? It will still be delicious, I promise. 
Hey, Mary says, let's see, Mary is from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. First time here. First of all, Mary, welcome. I hope you've got the gist of what's going on. For those of you who are new and maybe haven't chimed in, welcome. This is a great place to be. Um, if you haven't liked my page here on Facebook, Devour Dinner, please do so. It'll give you notifications when new recipes come up or for my lives, anything like that. So please like my page. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. Give it a heart. Share it if you will. Um, it's so appreciative all the way around. So appreciative. So Mary, welcome. It's good to have you. Veronica Brown from Fort Worth, Texas. You might be new as well. Sigrid says, I'm putting this on next week's menu. I love it. Amber, Amber's the first time. Amber, welcome. She's from Spokane. Then we see lots of welcomes. I love it, you guys. Okay, Kay has a question. All right, so Kay's question says, is one of the croissant chicken things a serving or maybe two? Can you make them ahead and just bake them before serving? So in my family, one serving is that pocket that I made that consists of two of the croissants. That's one serving. Um, so I've made eight. There's six here in our family. So I can bet that these other boys are going to fight and split them up and cut them in half and whatever they're going to do, right? But one serving is just one of those little pouches. So that's a great question. Linda says, did you send out emails this week? I signed up but haven't seen any. Linda, that's a great question. Okay, I did. My email went out first thing this morning. So check your, your spam. See if it went in there. However, if you did not confirm your address, then one won't be sent to you. It's a cool thing that goes on now on the internet that we can't just spam you and send you emails unless you're really requesting it. So not only do you put your email into the form, but it's going to send you an email. You have to open up that email and press confirm. And so if you have not done that, then it won't confirm your email and it will not send you anything until that is confirmed. Um, but Linda, if you've done both of those things and, they're, and you're still not getting them, direct message me with your email and I'll pull up your email and see what's going on. See if it really made it into the system correctly and we'll get you fixed and sorted out. And if that's the case for any others of you, let me know. Send me a direct message and I can take care of that later. Um, Amy says, I want to do your Johnny Carino's Bowtie Festival. Oh, I love that one. I love it. Um, that's a fabulous recipe. Just fabulous. Love that one. Um, the other one that I also really love, um, and I think, I think we're going to see that one coming up on a live, this one. It's for bow tie pasta, um, and it is a recipe that I got from the Disney Cruise Line on my last cruise, which has now been a year ago. Um, and it's a bow tie pasta with mushrooms um, in a very light Prosecco wine sauce with a little bit of Parmesan and hmm, I'm telling you, I ate that every day on sea days. Um, I unfortunately only had that four times. And yes, I was on a very long cruise um, to have that many sea days and it was heaven sent, um, which is why it's on my website. I just love it. But the Johnny Carino's one, that's my favorite item at Johnny Carino's is the Bowtie Festival. Um, it is on my website. Um, I do call it chicken carbonara because it is a pretty close to chicken carbonara. Sandra, you're welcome. Peggy says uh, celery would be awesome. Celery really is awesome for the texture. There's really not a lot of taste that celery gives, but the texture is fabulous. Um, hey, Nat says, greetings from Canada. I am a first timer as well. And I love your photo, the Grinch. I love it. So welcome, Nat. Welcome. We love having all of the new faces here. Please follow along. Please follow me on Facebook. Um, go ahead and submit your email addresses for my newsletters. Hey, with that said, I announced this in my newsletter this morning, but many of you aren't on it. So let me just share it really fast. You guys know I love Milfy. And you guys know I have a Milfy code. The code is devourdinner, one word, all caps, at checkout for $10 off. 
They've got a sale going on right now. It's for these two pants. They're $30 off, each of them. So it makes this one, the stainless steel one, um, $29.95, and this one is, I think, $39.95, um, and that's with the $30 off. My code will work if you put enough stuff in your cart to reach $59.95. Then it'll, you can use that $10 off code. Um, that's a heck of a deal. I use these all the time. I love them both, but I really love this, this non-stick one. It doesn't scratch. It's, it's just like awesome. I want you guys to see the pan though. Here we go. See how all the little honeycomb in it? Like it is nothing sticks to this, not eggs, not anything. Um, it's just amazing. These are heavy duty pans um, online. It shows all the different layers that are in the pan. I, I've never burnt anything with them and I love them. So if you're interested in those, my Milfi code or my link, let me drop that really quick. I just put that in the comments. Um, as always, you could get a multi-pot, the new multi-pot 2.0, which has the pressure release button. The $10 will work on one of those, as well as the crisp lid, which you guys see me using all the time. So that's awesome. Guess what's done? Are you guys ready? Let's see here. All right, we're gonna put this out. Just one sec. OMG. Do you guys see these? Look at that. We're gonna get that good picture in picture. Those look phenomenal. Now let's get a plate. A nice plate out here. I'm gonna get my nice small spatula. You guys, this is Pampered Chef. They are my favorite. I did buy some from some Pampered Chef parties going on here recently. If you guys have a chance to get them. This is my favorite. It's like two inches wide, it's small. This one is probably 15 years old. It's like fabulous. We're just gonna plate these up and I'm gonna cut into one. Look at how flaky it is. You guys see how nice and flaky it is? Um, okay, that's nice. So the only reason why it sticks to the bottom is because of the egg wash. So keep that in mind, they are fully cooked um, but the egg wash makes them stick a little bit. So I'm gonna push these right up here, get them out of the way. And let's um, yeah. We're gonna cut into them. I want you guys to see what they look like. So first of all, presentation wise, let's get a close up before I cut into them. There you go. See how nice and pretty they turn out? Just toasty with that egg wash. They're just beautiful. I like to serve, I like to serve these with a big garden salad. Um, a Caesar salad. My family really likes Caesar salad, so we make them a lot. Um, you could definitely serve them with rice um, if you wanted a carb. I like to do a lot of fresh vegetables, so we'll saute up like some zucchinis with some mushrooms and saute those up with some garlic um, on the side. Um, and that's how we like to serve it. So there's a lot of different possibilities depending upon what your family likes and how you want to eat them. But we're just going to cut into this. And I'm going to pick it up for you because I think I can. There we go. So you can see that I can pick this up. I could eat it just like this if I wanted to. I do want you to see this in picture in picture. Boom, there you go. See how the different layers with your croissant on the bottom and your nice yummy chicken in the middle and then the croissant on top. It's just easy to eat and enjoy. All right, you guys, that's my recipe. What do you think? 
Is it a winner? Is it a keeper? I know many of you made in the comments that you're going to make it this week. So here's my challenge to you. If you make it this week, I want to see pictures. Direct message me with a picture. Post it to my wall. Post it in a group with a link to the recipe and tag me. Um, whatever you want. Email it to me. But I want to see it. I want to see all the pictures from all of you this week um, of the recipes that you've made, whether it's this one or one from the past weeks, because it's so fun. And I'll put together a collage and show them over on Instagram um, and show all of the different recipes that I got this week, okay? Does that sound like a plan? All right, let's see if there's more. Okay, I'm getting a comment from, Co uh, from Gail. She says, your code didn't work on either pan. I tried um, and did two orders. Okay, you can't do, so for the pans, in order for the code to work, your total price in your basket has to be higher than $59.95. So you're not able to just put one pan in the cart and get $10 off. You'd have to put both pans or you'd have to put one of the pans and maybe a crisp lid or something else, okay? If you want both pans, you can put both pans in your cart and then it'll take the $10 off. So I'm glad I caught that. Thanks for chiming in, Gail. That's how that code will work. You have to have $59.95 for the code Devour Dinner, all caps, one word, to work on the milthy.com website. That makes sense. I'll repeat it again. So, first of all, there's kind of two things going on. The pans are on sale. They're already $30 off, which is huge. Right there, they're worth it just to buy one pan. So if you're interested in one pan, get it in your cart and buy it because they're already $30 off, each of them, okay? If you want to put both of them in your cart, then you can use my code Devour Dinner and get an additional $10 off your collective price. So enjoy that. Let me know if that works. And um, yeah, all right. I'm going to go down to the bottom and see what questions we have there. Okay, Mary says, um, I want to, to get the fryer lid now that I finally made eggs for the first time. The crisp lid is fabulous. We love the crisp lid for so many things. You guys have seen me use it on here a lot. Um, it's great, like hands down. I have both the original crisp lid and the newer crisp lid. I, there's nothing negative I can say about those. They're fabulous. Um... <laughs> D, I know, my water glass here that I've tipped a couple of times. My throat started getting tickly because we have lots of pollen in the air. All of our trees outside are in full bloom. I don't know if it's a harder spring or what, but there's just so much pollen. It's making my throat tickly, and I started to have a little cough, so I wanted, and I know I hit it back here. It's okay. I got it. We're good. <laughs> Brenda says, my mouth is watering now. Amy says, I missed it. I was on a call. Looks delicious. Amy, all of my videos are always available. And I'm uploading these videos to YouTube as well. So feel free to follow along at YouTube. Um, it's at Devour Dinner, once again, that you can find my channel. And all of these, these long live videos are going on YouTube. Susan says, it's absolutely killing me looking at this. Looks great says Judy, looks yummy, says Linda. I love it. All right, you guys, we've hit our hour mark. And again, I'm so grateful you're here. I'm so grateful for your support and all you've done. I'm so grateful for all of those who have given me the stars in the past. For those of you who have given stars this week as well, it really warms my heart. It really, it really does give me a pickup. Um, and I appreciate that so, so very much. So as always, I want to end my live with be kind. Be kind to one another. Everyone's going through a battle you know nothing about. And please be kind to one another. But most importantly, remember to be kind to yourself. You guys are doing an awesome job. Life has taken a great detour, a giant new adventure. And we're all learning how to adapt and grow in this new way of living. 
and you're doing great. So remember, I believe in you. I'm cheering for you. You guys can do this. These are recipes geared to for all of your busy lifestyles, and they're delicious and they're yummy. So I hope you'll enjoy them. And with that, I'm going to sign off. You guys, I'm Rebecca from devourdinner.com. So great to have you here, and we will see you next week. Bye.